Can I, can I pitch the class? Is that fine? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide to um, take a class with us engineers and sort of what excites you about AI and the intersection with law? I think there are two things. The first is that I come from a family of engineers and I just really wanted to be able to think about the law more systematically. And I think the second is that all of us need to realize that AI and technology in general is fundamentally transforming our government. And the more that law students can get in touch with that and figure out how that's going to work, uh, the better off we're all going to be. What about you? Um, I think the earlier that we can start proactively thinking about the intersection of AI and law, the earlier that we can start changing the existing laws and thinking about the technical solutions from which we need to come up with so that we're not stuck 20 years from now realizing that it was too late. So how are you continuing with your interest in AI and uh, policy? So I really think the Policy Lab doesn't stop with the Policy Lab. It really just introduced me to a whole new area of law. Uh, so I'm a 1L, which means that I can still take two more years of classes, and I'm definitely intending to do that. But furthermore, I'm actually continuing with the current project. And what we're doing right now is we're putting together all the pieces of the different reports, and we're going to submit them to ACUS, which is, it stands for the Administrative Conference of the United States. Uh, which is a very long acronym that basically means a body which helps advise administrative agencies. You're taking all the reports by the teams mm -hmm. that were developed through this policy practicum and compiling them together into a central report that will be used by every single administrative yeah. agency in the United States, impacting That's exactly millions of right. people. That's exactly right. And these agencies range from you know, the EPA to the Postal Service to the SEC. So it really touches pretty much every aspect of American life. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these agencies can also learn from one another, mm -hmm. not only from the broader report. So what we're really doing is we're starting a conversation yeah. across the US government. That's why Stanford is such a unique place, because we can not only look across all the agencies, which is something the agencies often can't do themselves, but we can also look across disciplines and apply both the law and the engineering to all of the agencies, package it all together and yeah. provide one neat report and set of recommendations. So it's been really cool. If it weren't for this policy practicum, I don't think such a report would have been able to be created anywhere else in the entire United States or probably even the world. Absolutely. The project that we made and the final report would have absolutely not been possible without the lawyers on our team. I think almost every night we were talking about um, issues that had come up or things that we had found that we wanted to run by the legal people on our team to ask them, how does this fit into existing case law? Is this related to airspace? Is, this, is there anything that exists like this for how cars are regulated? And we were constantly having discussions about case law. And on the flip side, I think they were always asking me questions about how does this work from a technical perspective? Is this going to be more important 20 years from now? Is this going to be less important? And constantly trying to figure out um, how these systems worked. Yeah, I experienced the same thing as well. Uh, and I think in our team, we actually got to know one another's disciplines so well that by the end of it, some of the engineers were asking legal questions and the lawyers were asking engineering questions. Uh, so I just thought it was a great experience. <laughs>